Welcome to In the Spotlight, a regular podcast from the Witham, Barnard Castle's Community Arts Centre. Yes, hello once again. Stuart Laundie welcoming you along to In the Spotlight, the weekly podcast from the Witham Barnard Castles Community Arts Centre. I do hope you're going to stick with us for the next half an hour or so. We've got a great little show coming up for you. Special guest this week is jazz singer Claire Martin, who will be chatting about a forthcoming gig at the Witham, along with a project that's very close to her heart and the uh, rigours of keeping her voice in good shape after 30 odd years on the road. There'll also be a tribute to the late, great Gordon Lightfoot, who died last week, aged 83, and we'll be looking at what's coming up at the Witham in the next seven days or so. But first to Claire Martin, who's coming up to the Witham on Friday, June the 2nd, when she'll be accompanied by Scottish jazz guitar legend Jim Mullen. 2023's already been a busy year for Claire, who's released an album called I Watch You Sleep. It's a tribute to the music of Sir Richard Rodney Bennett, and it was recorded in collaboration with American conductor and pianist Scott Dunn and the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. So, plenty to chat about, but to get us in the mood, here's a track from I Watch You Sleep. This is Don't Play Games With Love. Don't tell him no when you really mean yes. Give him the lowdown and don't make him guess. It may be fun, nevertheless. Don't play games with love. Don't send him. Signals that you don't intend Never begin what you don't mean to end You want a lover or only a friend Confuse you, love can divert you, then hurt you, desert you, love can excite you, then slight you and spite you. Look out, it's a dangerous pastime. Don't take a gamble that you're gonna lose. Mm-hmm. All that you win is a day with a blue. Here's some advice that you shouldn't refuse. Take it on the tip of your chin, dear. Take it from a lady who's been there. Don't play games with me. And her to desert you Love can excite you Then slight you and spot you Look out 
It's a dangerous pastime Don't take a gamble That you're gonna lose mm -mm. All that you're in Is a date with the blues Here's some advice That you shouldn't refuse Tip your chin, dear. Take it from a lady who's been there. Don't play games with love. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Don't play games with love. Delighted to be joined for this week's In the Spotlight by Claire Martin OBE. <laughs> you like the OBE? <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know, I forget. I forget. I've got, I mean, do, do I like it? Well, I'm very proud to have been uh, yes. given one. It was a nice day out, but um can't say it's life changing, but it's a, uh, it was a, uh, yeah, it was, it was, I'm very honoured. Uh, we're here to talk about, uh, among other things, the fact that you're coming to see us on uh, Friday, June the 2nd. I am. Um, and you're coming up with Jim Mullen, guitarist extraordinaire, uh, mm. Alex Garrett on the sax, and Jeremy Brown, who is the bassist. Yeah, and... Alex Alex Garnet on sax. Oh, what did um, I say? And Jeremy Brown. Um, yeah, they're amazing. They're the best you can get, really. I, I'm I'm really pleased that they're coming with me. So um, if people haven't heard of me, they may know of Jim Mullen or vice versa. But Jim Mullen's... Well, he's in his mid seventies now. He's a le he's a legend, legendary Scottish guitarist. Um, was uh, you know, in a band called Kokomo, and then was in the Average White Band, and he's played for everybody. He's just incredible. So, if you're into that kind of jazz guitar, Wes Montgomery, a bit more fusion, then um, then this is for you as well. Yeah, and when I was looking through your bio and your discography and everything before your collaborations with um with Jim go right back to to the start for you, don't they? He was on your first album. Yeah, he was. I mean, I was I was canny. I was when I first got my deal with Lim Records. I was in my early twenties, but I I I wanted to get Jim because he he was such a name even then, and I wanted to play with the best I could possibly get. I went up to him at a gig and said, "I I, I would you please do a gig with me." Um. You know, we got on very well, and he said, "said yeah," <laughs> and I think that was just a case of just being a having a lot of front, really, and having the uh, having the audacity to ask him. But we then we just started playing all the time, and it's been on and off, on and off for God about thirty odd years now. Yeah. He's incredible. He really loves singers. He loves songs. Um, he's just a musician's musician, and he's just amazing. So yeah, we go back. We've got a lot of repertoire to get through. <laughs> I'm not doing that many gigs with Jim this year. In fact, the, in fact, you, the one with you is just one of a handful. Um, his his wife is a singer, uh, Zoe Francis, fine singer. So he's very. She's kind of nabbed him now. Now he's oh, married us. So I've got a fine when he's free. But um, no, I, if I if I can um, work with him, I, I I do. But it's it's kind of more rare. But it makes it more special. But no, I'll get the gigs and give him a ring. See if he's up for it. See if he's free. Um, we haven't planned. We've more or less got an idea of the material we'll be doing it with them, but um, we'll see. I'm going to work it out the week before, but it'll be jazz standards. He likes real soulful stuff as well. We might do some Donny Hathaway songs. Um, yeah, it's just, it's be a nice mixed bag. You've been a professional singer, I think, since you were 19. And yes. uh, again, looking at the bio, you and I were born in the same year. So you've, you've been... 30, you've been on... <laughs> 30, is it 30, 36 years is that? Absolutely. Five, take away nineteen is what <laughs> thirty six. Oh my god! Because I, I, incredible. In my previous life, up until a couple of months ago, I was a I was a local newspaper journalist, and I'd just done thirty six years of local newspaper journalism. Oh, well, then we've done it together then. <laughs> and I fi I figured that was long enough, and I had time to do time to do to do one or two other things. So um, so and then, but I mean, what all I was going to ask was that: Do you still get the uh, the the buzz, the excitement of going out on tour um, 
all these yeah. years later than than when you first started out? I, th- I mean, some mm, good question. I mean, certainly it becomes after all this time um, a job you know, that I love and I'm privileged to do. I've just come back from a two-week tour of Sweden and I was excited about going there because I use Swedish musicians out there who are just incredible and I don't see them that often. So I'm excited about playing the music with people all the time. That never wanes. And because it's jazz and we're improvising on the spot, every night that I did with them was different and so therefore that was exciting. It was exhilarating. It wasn't boring. So I never, I never get... I'm always excited about making the music. I am getting a bit tired of going up and down the M1 now. <laughs> but um, but uh, that's just part of the deal. I mean, I, and now because I'm a bit older, I don't I don't try and drive home after the gig like I used to yeah. cane it coming home. I mean, when I come up to see you, I'll be definitely staying over because I live in Brighton. <laughs> yeah. oh, so there's no way. So, I mean, I just, that bit's a bit tiring, but I, I still get a thrill out of it. And I'm still very, very grateful that, you know, my voice is in good nick and I'm still you know, working with great players, better players um, than me, always working with people that are just world-class. So I guess yes is the answer, um, which is which is great to say. But the, the travel, less so. I think they, they close roads down all the time now, Stuart, at night. Yeah. Try and get home when the roads close, and it's, it's a bit annoying. Um, you touched on, on, on there, on just on it there, your voice. Um, do you have to do... Um, more work these days? Do you have to take care of it more these days than perhaps when you were a little younger um, or, or, or or not? I think I take more care of it now because I'm more sensible. Um, I have got a singing teacher. Uh, I've always had singing lessons, but the singing teacher I'm seeing at the moment, probably about once a month, his name is Stefan Holstrom, and I found him during lockdown. And he's teaching me an, a method of singing called Estill, the Estill method. And it's it's a different approach to thinking about the voice than I was doing for about 30 odd years um so I'm, I'm very interested in the human voice I'm interested in how he's teaching me um to be less effortful singer um looking after it wise you know I don't I've started to stop smoking I've stopped shouting I've stopped going to clubs going out late I now live like practically like a nun to keep <laughs> Because you just have to look after it as your instrument. But um, I, I did a, I did a masterclass the other day in Sweden. I was telling the singers, you know, rest your voice, look after it, make sure your monitors are loud enough, make sure you don't have very loud drummers, get friendly with sound men because they can make or break the the sound for you. Um, don't go to pubs where you're shouting, just don't, you know. So it's it's a lot of common sense looking after your voice, and it it. But but over the years, I've I, I know it. I've really really know it inside out. I know when. I'm having a good day or when I've got to rest or you just befriend it, you know, yeah. but um, hopefully I'll just keep getting a richer, better sound, more authentic as I, as the years unfold. <laughs> I was going to say, how has, how has the voice developed over the years? It's my range has got better for sure. Bottom end and top end. I've got more strength. I've got more tone. Um, I've got more harmonic ideas. I've just got better as a musician. I'm still not, I'm still not, I'm still not yet there yet with ideas. I mean, you never say, yeah, say I'm a jazz musician. You're always trying to get better. You're always trying to, you know, become um, a more rounded musician. I want better ideas. But my voice has got range-wise, I'm, I'm I'm happy with where it's sitting and I'm happy with how it's responding to quite a lot of work over the years. Um, I think it just, you just bring more life experience to the songs as well, don't you? You just have more to say. You've got a bit more grit. You've got a bit more authenticity got a bit more emotion you'd be you know you've had your heart broken and you you had kids and it's all you know you've, life has affected you and you <laughs> you're knackered you know the usual stuff but you bring that to the to the to the songs i think it's i think it's better yeah in the spotlight a regular podcast from the witham let's talk for a minute or two about this new um this new release that you've you've put out um just in the last couple of months really uh, i watch you sleep it's um uh, I get the impression it's a bit of something quite close to your heart. This one because it um, yeah. it features the it features the music of a, a chap that you collaborated with, and it's ten years since he died. Perhaps you perhaps tell us a little bit about uh, Richard Rodney Bennett. Richard Rodney Bennett, I'm looking at his picture now. Richard Rodney Bennett was um, a dear dear friend, and I worked for the last twelve years of his life as his singing partner um, in a sort of jazz cabaret duo setting. Really not cabaret, well, yeah, j- jazzy setting he played piano and sang and I sang with him um he is mostly known I guess for his film 
uh, film work and his film scores. He did Far From the Madding Crowd. He did Four Weddings and a Funeral, The uh, Murder on the Orient Express. I mean, he's he but he was a writer of symphonies. He was a writer of children's music, ballets, a real, I mean, across the board, a real Renaissance man and, and a really good friend. So he died 10 years ago and uh, Scott Dunn, also a dear friend of his, wanted to put together a songbook, Richard Ronnie Bennett's songbook with me, which is songs that Richard wrote with various friends and famous people like Johnny Mandel um, and also Richard's uh, favourite songs that he liked to sing. So we we did that last year and it's, it is, you're right, it's absolutely personal because it was a, it's like a love letter to him. I Watch You Sleep is the title and it's a song from um, the film Yanks. He wrote the film score to Yanks, uh, which is a film with Richard Gere in, in the 80s. And our other friend, Joel Siegel, wrote the lyrics. So, yeah, it's really close to my heart. And and lovely Scott, you know, he enabled me to sing with the uh, the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. It was just a dream come true. I had never sung live with an orchestra like that. Uh, so the whole thing was just like, wow, can't believe I did that. And hopefully we'll get some, and we're getting some very nice reviews and people that remember Richard and just want to keep his music going and out there and accessible are, are really on board. So, yeah. I'm guessing it involves the Royal Philharmonic. Is it? Is it the sort of thing you can take out on tour? <laughs> I, I mean, wish. What, what do you do? Just call them up and say, "Do you fancy, <laughs> do you fancy a month's worth of dates?" <laughs> I wish you could. No, it's unlikely I'm going to do a gig with them. I mean, like we had them for two days, and then and that was it. It was fleeting. Um, we are going to scale it down. We are going to go on the road with it next year, probably with the uh, Northern Symphonia. Oh, brilliant. Um, we're getting some we're in progress of at the moment to, talking to them and they've agreed so we've just got to get some dates next year 2024 um and we'll do some nice well we'll do some nice uh concert halls i hope so it's slightly smaller and they're um really up for it but then i think it would have been a you know remortgage job for the, <laughs> the world <laughs> <laughs> but it'd be great either way the the, the, the noise of venue are absolutely excellent so i will be doing something Ding. but it's not quite the same but the same songs with the same arrangements so if you close your eyes you didn't know the difference absolutely absolutely um so what uh, you, you're coming up to us um you're in the area actually because i think you're doing the swaledale festival which is the next valley across from us around about the same time that you're doing us what what does the rest of 2023 hold for you well obviously the highlight is coming up to you and uh <laughs> Um, the rest of the year, I'm doing festivals in the summer. Um, I'm promoting the Richard Rodney Bennett album. I've scaled it right down to just a trio. So we're doing the songs in just a trio form. So we'll do that at Ronnie Scott's and we'll do um, festivals up and down during the summer. Um, and then I guess it's just more, uh, I, I'm also doing quite a lot of production. I'm doing, a, I'm producing some singers and I've got a couple of, things in the irons in the fire with singers so I'll be in the studio with other singers I think after this amount of time now I can give some something back to singers that have perhaps never been in the studio so I've got I'm doing a couple of debut albums with singers which is great that's nice yeah and then just thinking about next year and touring the record can't really moan I think I do a bit of teaching as well so I've got um some some students coming over doing some master classes I'm off to Sweden again to do a big band gig yeah I mean it's looking it's looking okay I mean it's it's not quite as it was before the pandemic, but it's near as damn it. So, yeah, it's looking oh, all right. Can't people complain. Just come out. I think people are really – it's hard at the moment, isn't it? We, we yeah. were saying earlier, people have got to pick and choose when they can spend money on coming out and supporting the arts. So I'm just grateful for all the work, to be honest, Stuart. You mentioned there that you, you'll be in the studio helping a couple of younger singers with their debut performances. When Thinking back, who was, who was the person you looked up to who gave you sort of a – uh, a pat on the back, a push in the right direction. I think I think it would have to be Richard, Richard Ronnie Bennett, because I met him before I was even signed to a label. He did my liner notes. He encouraged me to explore different singers, different verses, different styles of songs. Uh, he introduced me to various people that were really great for me, uh, writers, singers, songwriters. I mean, I, I would say Richard was my mentor. I think that's, that's another reason why it was such an important thing to do this music with Scott. So... Um, and Jim as well, Jim Jim Mullen in his own way, you know, or encouraging me, helping me practice stuff that was a little bit tricky at first and nailing it. So I think, I think there's older guys, sort of slightly older guys now, um, were, <laughs> were instrumentally sort of keeping me going. And I didn't really have a singer 
sort of girl singer. I, I loved Norma Winston, I still do. She was a real icon, idol for me. Yeah, but I, I'd have to say it was Richard. Well, that seems a, a, a lovely place to stop. We seem to have come full circle with it there. Um, it's been lovely to chat to you. Oh, and we, look forward, you. Thank you. we look forward to seeing you on Friday, the 2nd of June. And uh, we wish you every success with all your endeavours this year. Thank you, Stuart. I'm really looking forward to the gig. Thank you. When I was young, the world was full of treasures. And every star was shining just for me So many prizes, so many pleasures All those tomorrows still to be But as the saying goes Time can fly so fast The bud becomes the rose and roses Never last But I'll always leave the door a little open I love to feel the breeze that passes by And though my dreams are few Unlikely to come true I'll always leave my heart a little room to fly There'll always be another song I want to sing And so I'll never care if winter's in the air I know I'll always see a sign of spring And when I see that sign Will I close the door again? Be alone once more again in my Shell. And when I taste the wine, will I drink my fill again? Start to feel the thrill again and surrender to the spell. Yes, I'll always leave the door a little open, for well, that's the only way I. Can survive believing there's a chance of more than just romance. Believing that it's wonderful to be alive.
Another track there from the brilliant Claire Martin from the album I Watch You Sleep. That was I'll Always Leave the Door a Little Open. And don't forget, she's coming to the Witham on Friday, June the 2nd. You can get tickets now. They're online at www.thewitham.org.uk or you can call the box office on 01833 631107. In the Spotlight, a regular podcast from the Witham. Now to tell us what's coming up in the next week or so at the Witham, here's Beverly Redfern. Coming up in the next seven days, we've something for everyone. On Tuesday, May the 16th, legendary entertainer Richard Digents takes to the stage. He's bringing his own brand of humour. On Thursday, the 18th, we're showing a National Theatre live screening. This is The Best of Enemies, a blistering political thriller, and I'm sure it'll have you on the edge of your seat. On Friday we have the absolute finest in blues rock. When Rivers Meet are bringing their Breaker of Chains tour to the Witham, and they are ably supported by American singer-guitarist Ariel. I've heard this band before and they're absolutely great. They will rock the Witham. For more details and tickets, go online to www.thewitham.org.uk or call the box office on 01833 Thanks, Beverly. Now to end this week, a little tribute to the late great Canadian folk singer Gordon Lightfoot, who died last week. It comes in the form of a new version of one of his classic tracks, If You Could Read My Mind, which featured on his 1970 album Sit Down, Young Stranger. It's been recorded by Susie Starlight and Simon Campbell, who are coming to perform at the Witham on Saturday, October the 7th. So have a listen and enjoy this. And I'll say cheerio, and we'll see you next time. My mind, love, what a tale my thoughts could tell. Just like an old time movie about a ghost from a wishing well in a castle dark or a fortress strong with chains upon my feet. You know that ghost is me, and I will never be set free. As long as I'm a ghost You can't see If I could read your mind, love What a tale your thoughts could tell Just like a paperback novel The kind the drugstore sells When you reach the park Where the heartaches come The hero would be me But heroes often fail And you won't read that book again Because the ending's just too hard to take Gets burned in a three-way script Enter number two A movie queen to play the scene Of bringing all the good things out in me But for now, love, let's be real I never thought I could act this way And I've got to say that I just don't get it I don't know where we went wrong But the feeling's gone And I just can't get it back If you could read my mind, love What a tale my thoughts could tell Just like an old-time movie About a ghost from a wishing well 
castle dark Or a fortress strong With chains upon my feet The stories always end And if you read between the lines You'll know that I'm just trying to understand The feelings that you'd like I never thought I could feel this way And I've got to say that I just don't get it I don't know where we went wrong But the feeling's gone And I just can't get it back Thanks for listening to In the Spotlight from The Witham, Barnard Castle's Community Arts Centre. Available on all major podcast platforms. So please give us a follow and leave a comment or listen online at www.thewitham.org.uk. We'll be back soon with another episode.